Well, I won't be happy this has come out. Let's begin. Well, apparently Ulez has found herself in quite a predicament following a landmark legal verdict that has, to be honest, has left the whole scheme in disarray. And that is because a scaffolder named Noel Wilcox found himself facing a jaw-dropping £11,500 on penalties. But in a surprising twist, he emerged victorious with a groundbreaking legal ruling that has cast doubts on the legitimacy of key signs. For the Ulez sister scheme, it's like watching a courtroom drama unfold, isn't it, with rude signs and legal jargon and clashing a battle of words. But with the whole Ulez expansion to cover the entirety of Greater London looming, Noel's court victory is being hailed as a potential turning point. Because suddenly, Ulez's promise of stricter emissions regulations and hefty fines seems to be unravelling at the seams, doesn't it? It's like watching a carefully constructed house of cards tremble in the wind. And adding to the intrigue, a recent study unveiled that a staggering 75% of motorists successfully challenged their clean air zone charges. It's as if every driver has suddenly become a savvy contestant on a game show designed to outwit the bureaucrats, but let's just zoom in on Noel's situation here, because what's his alleged crime? Navigating the company truck to and from a modest depot in Harfield, North West London. How dare he do such a thing? And the lower emission zone's punitive fines for polluting vehicles make even the most costly parking tickets seem like pocket change, doesn't it? However, Noel managed to defy the odds and convince the appeal tribunal that the signs were about as clear as London fog. But the true gem in Noel's legal argument is this, the Road Traffic Act, and that states that if motorists are going to be charged, you have to let them know. A revolutionary motion, isn't it? But anyway, the article says that London Mayor Sadiq Khan's hated low emission zone was in chaos last night following a landmark legal verdict. Scaffolder Noel Wilcox hit with £11,500 in penalties, won a ruling that key signs for its sister scheme were not lawful, and he believes that his win paves the way for others to fight charges when Khan's ULEZ expands to cover the whole of Greater London tomorrow. And it comes as a study showed 75% of motorists win their appeals over charges for clean air zones outside the capital. Noel, who has 48 run up his huge bill from a company truck heading to and from a depot in under the low emission zone, ULEZ, Polluting vans and HGVs must pay up to £300 a day or face big fines. But Noel refused to pay, and an appeal tribunal ruled in his favour, saying that Transport for London's LES sign, that's low emission zone signs, are not authorised and lawful. He said, The Road Traffic Act states that if there is risk that motorists are going to be charged, you have to let them know. But the low emission zone signs just say LES or ULES zone. They don't make it clear about charges. And the win by Noel of Berkhamsted, Hertfordshire, is admittedly not binding in other courts, but celeb lawyer Nick, Mr Loophole Freeman, said it's what's known as persuasive, which means it can be used in other cases. And he added, of the signs, just saying you are in a zone by itself is meaningless. They need to tell you not just where you are, but what happens. In other words, a charge could be incurred. But Nick Freeman added that because that hasn't happened, their signs are not fit for purpose and might as well not be there. Because this was a hearing at the first level, it is not legally binding. I can you remember a little while back when a bloke called Gorma waltzed into the BBC headquarters, probably hoping to ace a job interview and potentially get some of that good old TV licence money spent on himself and his wages. Well, if not... Fate had other plans, and before we could say tech whiz, he got thrust onto the airwaves discussing IT matters, even though, of course, he, from what I've heard, didn't exactly have a bloody clue what they were asking him, as I'm guessing he probably, you know, had the tech expertise of your great aunt Maureen. He looked like a deer caught in the headlights, struggling to keep up with the technological jargon, while viewers around the world sat back and thought, this is for real. It's kind of like accidentally becoming the lead actor in a blockbuster film, but reciting lines from a completely different script. But now let's just address the big elephant in the room. And no, I'm not talking about my girlfriend. I'm talking about Gorma's sudden urge to sue the very network that turns him into an unintentional star. The thing is, Gorma, you know, how can you expect to sue or even be paid when you presumably never even whispered, Hey, I'm just a regular guy, not a tech wizard. It's like showing up for a superhero convention, getting mistaken for the keynote speaker and then demanding a speaking fee, isn't it? It's just absolutely ridiculous in my opinion. Not that I'm on the side of the BBC, of course, but surely I'm on the side of common sense. And Gorma's threat of legal action is, to be honest, making me scratch my head a bit. Is the BBC's hiring process so topsy-turvy that they can't even ask someone, what's your name and yeah, why are you here for? I mean, if their conversational skills were any more absent, we'd have a nationwide search party looking for them, wouldn't we? Let's just not forget, of course, the cherry on top of the cake. 
Gorma plans to pen a book about this whole thing, aptly named Wrong Guy. It's like the universe has handed the title on a silver platter, isn't it? And if the book becomes a bestseller, yeah, maybe we should all write about our life stories. With titles like Accidentally Awesome or Oops, I Did It Again. Although, to be honest, I kind of think the last one was taken by Britney Spears a while back. But anyway, the article says that it's been 17 years since Guy Gorma was somehow mistaken for an IT expert and interviewed on the BBC News. He is now threatening, of course, to sue the broadcaster. And in 2006, Gorma immediately became a viral sensation when he unwittingly found himself being grilled live on air despite entering the BBC offices for a job interview. The thing is, though, he was waiting in the reception area of the BBC television centre while the actual IT expert, Guy Kenny, was waiting to be led to the studios in another waiting room. But when Gorma's name was called, he just assumed it was for the job interview. But minutes later, of course, he was on our televisions around the world, having absolutely no knowledge of IT whatsoever. Gorma clearly looks panicked as he tried to power through the discussion with presenter Karen Bowerman about a legal battle between Apple Computers and the Apple Corp's record company. And Gorman was completely clueless, but did predict music would be released online only, with of course the exception of vinyl and the resurgence of the cassette popularity is basically true. And on YouTube alone though, the blunder had over 5 million views, but was one of the most popular stories across all social media. Gorma then became one of the most recognisable faces in the UK, but he's now said he hasn't received any royalties from the BBC, and he wants a slice of the money that they made from the interview. They've been using it for nearly 20 years, with no penny to me, he told hosts Josh Peters and Archie Manners. And when I see they are paying people millions here and there, that clip made them richer. Gorma, of course, who now works for a charity helping people with learning disabilities, added that he plans to write a book about the whole incredible case of mistaken identity, aptly named Wrong Guy. Metro.co.uk, shameless plug for you there, has contacted the BBC to comment on this story. Well, of course, the Home Office is back with yet another edition of The Great Immigration Circus, and in display of some technological prowess that's bound to rival a sci-fi blockbuster, they're kind of contemplating the revolutionary idea of equipping illegal boot people with, wait for it, electronic monitoring tags. It's like watching a government agency attempt to join the modern age, but with a budget-friendly twist. I mean, can you imagine the meeting room filled with people thinking ways to deter migrants from crossing the channel? But to be honest, the easiest way, in my opinion, would surely be the Australian Prime Minister Tony Abbott approach and just ban anyone that comes over here illegally from the safe country of France by boat from trying to claim any asylum at all. And then, of course, watch the numbers drop overnight. Let's just delve for a minute into the world of the Illegal Migration Act, the legislation that's practically the choose-your-own-adventure of immigration policies. I mean, step right up, folks, and spin the wheel, and you'll land on either detain, remove, or the all-exciting third country option, although, admittedly, that one isn't quite active at the minute, is it? It's kind of like entering a surreal game show of some sorts, isn't it? But, of course, the Home Office is grappling with an unexpected twist. Their accommodations are about as common as uh, midget being able to reach a top shelf magazine. So of course they've dispatched their team on deep dive missions to explore alternatives. But personally though, I don't really think that the idea of presumably letting people loose across the country, some of which of course may obviously have slippery fingers and dropping their ID documents or expensive iPhones or whatever in the sea on the way over is such a good idea. I mean, yes, okay, we'd know where they are, but I mean, what if we might have a hard time finding out that they actually have a criminal record as long as Amanda Holden's legs? Or maybe, of course, they could even be wanted for some of those potential crimes. I mean, what our public safety in that case, eh? Although, to be honest, that's not all, because alongside the dazzling prospect of electronic tagging, there is also talk of turning off the financial tap to those who bunk off from their home office check-ins. And as for the insider's scoop, a home office source apparently casually drops the bomb that tagging has always been something that the home officers have been keen on. I mean, to be honest, keen, I've been keen on having chocolate cake. And to be honest, that is putting it mildly, considering I'll jump through hoops for it. But anyway, don't worry, because the stats reveal that the channel crossings has surged past the 19,000 mark. I mean, can anyone else remember when Rishi Sunak declares he'd stop the boats? Well, kind of appears that he's missed the memo there, doesn't it? Or maybe actually he's just a giant penis. But anyway, the article says that the Home Office is reportedly considering fitting asylum seekers arrive in the UK via unauthorised means such as small boats crossing the channel with electronic monitoring tags. A national newspaper said officials are mulling over the idea as a way to prevent migrants who cannot be housed in limited detention sites from absconding. The Illegal Migration Act places a legal duty on the government 
to detain and remove those arriving in the UK illegally, either to Iran or another safe third country. However, spaces in the Home Office accommodations are in short supply. Well, to be honest, that's not really surprising, is it, considering nearly every lefty lawyer out there seems to be throwing their weight behind, oh, we can't stay there for whatever reason. Even if, of course, our soldiers or whatever else have stayed in things like that before. But anyway, officials have been tasked to deep dive into the alternatives, according to the newspaper. And while the preferred solution is to increase the number of detention places, well, that's not personally my preferred solution, but anyway, electronic tagging has been mooted, as it's cutting off financial allowances to someone who fails to report regularly to the Home Office. The Times cited a source from the department as saying, Tagging has always been something that the Home Office has been keen on and is the preferred option to withdraw on financial support, which would be legally difficult as migrants would be at the risk of being left destitute. Asked whether, of course, tagging is under consideration, a source close to the Home Secretary, Swallow Braverman, said, we already do it. The Home Office data said that this week showed the channel crossings have topped 19,000 for the year so far, despite Prime Minister, or unelected Prime Minister as I like to call him, Rishi Sunak's pledge that he will stop the boats. What, to be honest, yeah, I know I'm probably asking for a lot here, but maybe, just maybe, the government could also sort out the problem in this video, because let's face it, this could soon be affecting us all sooner than you think.